Wazowski, guns and gangs. Detective Kelly, duh, drug squad. I had no idea. It's so weird that we haven't met Do yet. Do you mind if I get back to arresting this guy? Ladies, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. And more importantly, thank you for doing such a smart, funny, social friendly, social understanding uh, show that I've seen in a long, long time. This is a blessing for 2021 and you two are outstanding in this. Congratulations on this show. Thank you. Thank you. I loved it from beginning to end. For folks who are watching this whole thing on Rudy Blair Entertainment Media, RudyBlairMedia.com, of course, I got a chance to see the first episode that you folks are going to get a chance to see. And I'm telling you something, this is amazing. First, I got to ask the both of you, um, how do you feel about being part of something like this? Like I said, very smart. And in a lot of ways, even though there's some comedy, there's a lot of serious drama to this, but it's still something that represents uh, what's going on in today's world? Yeah, I have to, you know, give kudos to the creators um, and the uh, producing team for being the stewards of that um, vision. You know, um, they were very open and honest about wanting to be true to what's going on today. Also creating, you know, characters that are human and flawed, uh, but that we can, you know, find the humor in that uh, amidst, you know, in the midst of talking about very complex and deep and, you know, difficult uh, topics. Um, and it's timely. And, and at, but at the end of it, you know, in the words of Tassie, when we all collectively, because we, we continue to have conversations about the show uh, in the beginning and throughout the uh, filming of it up until the last episode about what we wanted it to be. And one thing that I take away from Tassie is that, you know, she always wanted to inspire hope with this show, you know, yes, reflect what's going on um, and, and take that with a, with a bit of seriousness, but then also how do we move forward in light and, and in hope? And so um, I think that's, you know, kind of how we've meshed this world together of, uh, of pretty hard cases. Yeah. Meredith, I'm going to ask you, and sorry, I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to ask you right off the top for folks who don't know what we're talking about. What is the series about? Because it's two people who come together who shouldn't come together, but they realize they need each other. I feel like you just did it, Rudy. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you come on the press tour, no, I'm saying thank you. <laughs> what Rudy Blair says, that's our show. That's pretty hard. <laughs> that sums it up. It is true. I mean, it's a one hour action packed procedural, you know, peppered with comedy. A bit really um, for myself and I think Adrian that it focuses on two women in their 40s who are top of their game and grappling with different types of loneliness and their friendship allows them to continue to sort of grow, continue to ask questions about the world and also with oneself. And I think for me, it was so incredible to be inspired by the script and by Adrian by reminding myself that, you know, in my mid forties as a woman, you are still gonna make some of the best friends you will ever make. You are still gonna ask some of the biggest questions of yourself and others around you that you were gonna ask. And the fact that I got to do it with Adrian Moore and the creators of the show, well, that's what we did every day. We were uh, light, we were playful, and we were constantly asking questions. No, definitely. And Adrian, um, you know, one of the things when I brought up the comment about, you know, two people coming together who shouldn't come together, but they do, um, I found it was kind of like the same thing with the other characters, the ones who are supposed to be closest in their lives. They're the ones who are supposed to be the ones who you're supposed to, the character is supposed to trust and rely on. And it doesn't work out that way. So it's almost like the, the true saying of opposites attract. This mm -hmm. is definitely the case. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, Rudy, you really do need to um, know, Rudy. be the spokesperson <laughs> for this show because that's literally what we grappled with. We grappled with, you know, why do we push people away? The people that are closest to us, the people that love us or the people that want to to be with us. The, why, why, why is it that the people that we want to be near push us away, you know, in our personal lives? And so these women are facing those issues, you know, um, Kelly with trusting, you know, people at work, trusting relationships. Um, uh, the only person she feels she can trust 
is herself. And then someone comes in her world that is the dynamic opposite of that. And, you know, yes, of course, there's that initial clash. It's not a, it's not a, 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 a competitive competition, you know, co it's not a, co a competition, but it's a, certainly a clash of personalities, um, you know, the right and the left, the, the what is right, what is wrong, what um, is law and order versus serve and protect, you know, what is white privilege, what is, you know, uh, what, is, what is blue lives matter and black lives matter, all these concepts that, you know, these women are, are talking about from their different perspectives. Um, um, and they find out that it's actually each other's perspective, you know, that, that, that they can respect. And I think, you know, yes, as characters, um, coming to that bridge and understanding was great. And I think also it, it helps to like extend that in the greater part of like the world, right? If we, if we um, value our differences just as much as we do our similarities, you know, um, it would be dynamic, you know, coming together. I thought that was brilliant. And the other thing I was very surprised about too was fitting all that in into one episode, which I thought was absolutely amazing, but it all worked. And folks, I want you all to make sure that you listen in. There's a beautiful Karen joke in this uh, first episode that had me cracking up. But the other thing that I noticed too, right off the top, talk about representing Toronto and Canada and the melting pot. Um, and I don't, again, it's, um, and, and Meredith, you want to make comments on this because women in charge, uh, all different, we're talking about all different types of uh, pe people's backgrounds. I mean, this was truly a melting pot and really representing what 2021 should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're right. That's what Toronto is. And it's great to see it represented on screen where it should be, you know, and that is down to Tassie and Sherry and their vision of the show and how they see Toronto. I'm also loving that a Canadian show isn't afraid to be Canadian. It's, Adrian and I were laughing before, it's like, it's showing Canadian money. It's showing the flag. It's showing different types of people. It's showing different conversations and it's flawed. It's not showing it as like, oh, isn't this this haven that we live in? Cause it isn't, it has a lot of work to do itself. So I think that that given, our, that was our perimeter to play in and we both enjoyed it. And we did our best to enjoy all seasons of that Toronto has to offer. So we started at the end of August and took Adrian all the way in to December, which is a different type of film. <laughs> Adrian, the other thing that I love too, the other thing I love, yeah, I, I could see that definitely. The other thing I love too was the fact that I think this was the first show that actually used social media for real. It wasn't like, it was thrown in. Can you comment about that too? Because what I saw was like what everybody else does. Yeah, I, I you know, I, it's interesting to when you, when you read something on the page and then you see how it manifests on the screen and, you know, on the page, it's just like Kelly sends a text to, to Sam or, or Kelly pulls up, you know, so-and-so social media account, you know, blah, 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 blah. But then to see how it looks in editing when they when they put all the bells and whistles in, you're like, oh my God, this is so relevant. It's so current. It's so, you know, what we see today, you know, with um, social media threads, with, um, you know, how, how we use social media to account for each other, you know, not only as, as friends, but even, you know, as, cops <laughs> so that was that was really interesting to explore you know and putting something so relevant and so current um in uh in in, in, in our show i'm going to ask you both this meredith if you can go first the the cop training let's talk about that you know one <gasps> of the things i loved was the fact that i noticed how you guys in a certain scene held your guns it wasn't out it was close and down like that which i thought was very interesting i've never seen that talk about that please i cannot wait to talk about it because <laughs> and I, obviously our first love is each other but we have a second love and we sometimes compete for this love we do <laughs> what is his name what is his, his name? name is john stead john stead yes, is our more than stunt coordinator what a gift that human being is to the show mm -hmm. and us. Mm -hmm. his wealth of knowledge so everything that you just complimented on i can't take credit for any of it 
I mean, we did our research and we can get into that, but really we should spend the time talking about the brilliance of John Stead. That was all him. He was our go-to in so many ways. So it, it, it's hard. There's so much research you can do uh, to play a cop and the type of cop that you want to play. But having John there, oh my gosh, Adrian, I mean, we came to him for everything. So He's a legend in the theater community. He has worked on several television shows and film. Um, a lot of the, uh, the like the big tactical scene you see in the first episode, a lot of those uh, tactical units were police officers, um, trained army men. And so, you know, and these are men that, that John works with. And, and so it's, it's everyone, you know, it's, it's funnel channeling through him, giving the input of, when a tactical team is going in, like how, how is it actually done? Um, now there are some things, you know, we kind of like fudge for, you know, TV magic, uh, but but in terms of how they would move into a unit and, and, and break things down, I mean, I felt like I was a real cop at one moment and, and I was like, oh no, this is actually not a real gun. But um, he, was, he was incredible. The other question, AJ, I'm gonna throw this over to you too is, what we are watching and what I watched for that, well, I say hour, um, went through so many things from comedy to, to in some ways, heartbreak, frustration, um, a crime story. Uh, and then while all this is going on, the script itself is switching things around. When you're thinking one thing, suddenly you're thinking something else and then you're thinking something else. I mean, don't go to the bathroom. Don't go pop some popcorn you literally have to sit there and watch this from beginning to end i have to say that was the blessing of creating a se of a pilot season you know in that uh, we wanted to make it relevant we wanted to make it funny we wanted to make it poignant we wanted to honor you know the procedural aspect of of telling um a cop story you know tassie is amazing at that you know they had so much success with uh, rookie blue, uh, but we couldn't deny what was happening right outside of our doors. And so we were always in constant conversation about how to bring that world and reality into this world um, um, and make it poignant, but also, you know, make it, make it funny and, and make it, um, make it light. And it, cause I think sometimes when you go too heavy, you kind of get mired in the depression of it all. And we wanted to move forward in, in hope. And then when you're creating a show like that, you, we, we tried, we tried one scene five different ways, you know, um, and we, we, we find our groove and we tried a different way. So I think that was the blessing of working with someone like Meredith and with the supportive team of Tassie and Sherry and Amy about, you know, let, let's try different ways and see where we land. Oh, did you ever land? And what yeah. a groove. I, like I said, it's such a whirlwind and I love it. But the thing is though, there has to be chemistry. You can see the chemistry on that screen. Meredith, what do you think it is between you and Adrian? What is that chemistry? I don't know. I mean, I, it's pretty magical. Uh, we, we've talked about it in every interview when we first met at the coffee shop, cast room above, it was instant. And I think Adrian said earlier, the interesting thing was we didn't immediately talk about the work. The first thing we talked about was each other. We were right into each other's lives. And then we got in trouble for being too loud, like all this fun stuff happened in the day. I think this immediate trust and this immediate um, place of safety and exploration allowed us both to have that childlike quality of exploration and failure and feeling safe. So the fact that any of this love that I have for Adrian and what she gave to me as a gift of like as a friend, as an artist is on the screen. It's like, I'm so happy that the audience gets to see that. And when we were in a green room just before we, I like a green room or the new lingo for Zoom meetings, but before we <laughs> talked to you was we were actually, you know, just talking about how lucky we are that we have that. And what if you didn't? And what what's that mm -hmm. like? Because yeah. it's not it's not something I ever took for granted. I knew that it was special. I just wanted the audience to see it. Yeah, especially given in light of working in this pandemic, you know, I, I think, you know, God, you know, thankfully we had those moments before we, uh, you know, the pandemic and going into filming during a pandemic, we were able to sort of, you know, maintain that kernel of creativity and trust and vulnerability that we, 
had um, uh, discovered when we initially met in December of, of, of 2019. So, you know, that was sort of our guiding light. And Meredith and I were very honest with each other about how we wanted to set a tone, you know, of, of lightness, you know, um, when we, when we, you know, work on set every day because we knew the incredible odds that we were up against, you know? And so we wanted everyone to still feel like we were creating something special. As we wrap this up, Meredith, I'll let you uh, help end this. And then um, Adrian, I'm gonna ask you the same question. What do you hope fans get from this great new series? It's, Adrian talked about it earlier in the interview and Tassie, um, it's been quite a year, quite a few years for everyone. And even though the show goes into some places that are hard and dark and there is crime involved, I also hope it gives a sense of lightness and hope and people can just really enjoy themselves for an hour. And I hope that we let them in, that Adrian and I had found such a special thing and I hope the audience feels that we're letting them into that and they're a, a part of that sort of energy that we have. And Adrian? Absolutely. And, and to add to that, you know, I always, what I love about, you know, what, what I do and what we do in this industry is, you know, to sort of be, um, use our voice and our platform to not only talk about what's currently going on, but, but um, how we can be a beacon to each other, you know, for future, for the future. And, what I loved about creating this show in spite of a pandemic is that you can still create something quality and quantitative um, um, in these in these you know difficult times. And we can still laugh, you know, in spite of all of this. Um, and uh, that, you know, our better best days are ahead of us. Absolutely. Cannot wait to see the rest of this series. Cannot wait to talk to you both again for season two, because I know what's going to happen. And I'm actually crossing fingers, either two other things. One, that somehow this becomes a movie in some shape or form, or two, you two work together on something else because you are both <laughs> amazing. The chemistry is there and it's got to happen. You two are a team. I just love the series. Thank you so yeah. much for this oh, interview. Oh, Rudy, you're a sweetheart. <laughs> oh, no, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for this and cannot wait to see the rest of the show. Thanks, Rudy. Have a great day. Thank you, Rudy. I would like you to know that I am aware of my privilege and I am an ally. Well, let's get this woman a trophy.